to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in! <laughs> Happy Halloween, Foot Clan! <laughs> Cliff Kingsbury, Adam Gase, Rodrigo Blankenship, welcoming you to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. It's me, everyone. Oh, Glad to be here. Super excited. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't do the whole show that way, Adam. Adam, I know you can't help yourself. Oh, stop it. You can break any and all Kalen Balaj related news today. Oh. That's, that's my gift to you, Adam. That's your guy. That's your guy. I... Cannot express the the shame and guilt I feel that he's not currently on my roster right now. Right. I've got my top men working on getting him back. And uh, the hyperdrive situation, that is uh, still... I, uh, did you all enjoy it? What? I hope... Mm. I'm, I'm loving the now, hyperdrive. I understand you actually gave up play calling the second half of last game. Does that mean you're already stepped in on your, on your plan? How many... <laughs> How many steps are there here? We're currently up to 30 steps now. All right. We're on step 18. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a shout out to our fine producers, Judge Giamatti, Al Borland. They've, uh, they've decorated the set. Uh, I've got one of my favorite quarterbacks in football displayed in front of me. Uh, but I want to reiterate how much Josh Rosen is a part of our future. Yes. Uh, I still believe. Still believe. Now, we have a great show. We got matchups to get into today. This is the Halloween episode of the show, and uh, we have a Halloween segment for you. Let's do it. <laughs> there's, there's, no, there's no lyrics in that. That's just sound it's, effects, Mike. It's scary. Um. All right, compare a player this mm. year to a Halloween candy. We like doing these comparisons. Uh, we're, we're all in on the Halloween theme. So, uh, Rodrigo, why don't sure. you go first? I'm going to talk about uh, wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers, Debo Samuel. Mm -hmm. Debo Samuel is... I think I just heard your face mask rub against that what that sound was? the I, microphone. I just assumed it was Adam over here. <laughs> it did sound like me. Um, he, he was quoting Adam. Yes. Um, Let's quote my good friend and colleague here, uh, Adam. <laughs> Debo Samuel is dots. Okay. Because dots, well, not everybody loves them, but I, I think they are delicious. They're dots, my wife's favorite candy. They're my wife's favorite candy. Well, well, well. Are wow. we married to the same person? I don't person? know. But dots are an outstanding candy. But you better eat them the second that they, they, they come off the factory floor <laughs> because there is a short window yeah. to capitalize on dots. They get so stale, so hard, and then they'll rip your teeth out. And Debo Samuel cannot stay healthy. And while this, you know, for, for most people, this is something that, you know, it's a short window. He's only in his second year. His injury history goes back through to college. He has never been. And, you know, we, we, we have the man drop for him, mm -hmm. you know, because when he plays, oh. He runs like a man. 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 And I think he should stop. I, I think maybe be more little run boy, like a boy, um, because maybe you'll stay healthy. He goes too hard in the paint, and uh, so I think he is like dot small window to capitalize on him. And otherwise, you are. Um, Does that mean you play him the second he's available? From here on out, I think you, if you want him, you got to play him as soon as he's active. Yeah, it, it's tough because uh, he plays. Uh, what was it like? Thomas Rawls used to play. Oh yeah, and uh, he used to get himself <laughs> pretty hurt. All right, I'm going to go with a, a Devin Singletary comparison. Devin Singletary is to me red hot. Okay. Okay. Uh, we keep pretending that it's a good candy. Mm. We keep pretending that Devin Singletary is a good fantasy start. And yes, it is a piece of candy. And yes, he is a running back. 
But maybe not having that candy is actually better. Mm. You've got a lot to choose from. Why do people think Red Hots are decent? That's true. They're, they're there's, a terrible there's so many candy. other candies to eat. There's so many other candies. He's had two games that were okay, and they were both when Zach Moss missed. And uh, they say the sky's the limit. Uh, the floor is the limit for Devin Singletary. I, I look at... I have to decide between him and and your favorite player, Adam, uh, Frank Gore, every single week. Oh, man, I love Frank Gore. And I don't know what to do. So, Red Hots, let's get rid of them. And Devin Singletary, I'm sorry. I'm so tired of it. Yes. All right, I want to talk about Mike Evans, who is regular M&Ms. Okay. Delicious. Who doesn't like a bag of regular M&Ms? They are fantastic. When you when you don't have the other option, because <laughs> everyone knows that peanut butter M and M's oh. are by far superior. If there's two bags out, yeah, it's it's not even close. It's not a question. You're grabbing the peanut butter M and M's because they are so superior. And <laughs> I just saw myself in the camera. Uh, but M M&M's and M's are when they're just by themselves, and you don't realize that there's other things out there. They come through. Oh, yeah. And that's what Mike Evans is doing right now. When the other options are gone from the team, when Chris Godwin's out, the bag of regular M&M's is going to get it done because the bag of peanut butter M&M's is off the field. So Mike Evans, still delicious. <laughs> regular M&M's. Still good, but it was better when he was peanut butter M&M's. Where's all the rhetoric of the consecutive 1,000-yard seasons and all that? When it comes uh, Tom, to Tom Brady M&Ms. has taken it away from M&Ms us. M&M's has a long, storied career of being one of the highest selling That's true. products in America. So, yeah, I mean, that the Mike Evans comp, it makes a lot of sense. Anybody got any peanut butter M&M's? I'm, oh, man. I'm kind of <laughs> no, and the answer, hungry. The answer is no, because if we had them, someone would be eating them. You don't yeah. sit on peanut butter no, M&M's, No, you Andy. don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. All right. Every Friday, we give a special item away. Signed Keenan Allen jersey going to Dylan Newton, a supporter over at jointhefoot.com. Congratulations, At Dylan. first, I thought we gave a Dylan Newton jersey away to Keenan Allen, which we could do as well. I just don't know if the demand is I'll as bet, high. I bet Dylan would sign a jersey for Keenan. Yeah. Well, we can work on that. But uh, pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS, get $10 off your first item. We give an item away each and every Friday, and we're giving an item away right now at footclangiveaway.com, a signed Kenny G jersey. So if you want to enter that contest, that is footclangiveaway.com. We have eight matchups to get into. We also have some reaction from last night's Thursday night football game. And really, the headline is, if you don't have Julio Jones, it was not a good game. That is For anybody. Uh, you were disappointed if you had Mike Davis, Teddy Bridgewater, if you had DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson. If you were lucky enough or had to, like Al Borland in one of our leagues, start Curtis Samuel, you were very happy. Another rushing touchdown and then a flea flicker touchdown. Todd Gurley, if you had him, you were oh, saved. Yo, you were tilted. You, If you had Todd Gurley, I hope that you did not watch the game. Because if you woke up this morning and saw what he did for fantasy, you're like, okay, all right, he got a touchdown. He was, you know, double-digit fantasy points. Because he had a touchdown. Because he had a, because he had the touchdown. Yeah. If you watched the game, it was – I mean, I, I – You was, were tilted. I was tilted off the face of the planet. You were using capital letters. Some of them were uh, – <laughs> You know, omitted for uh, uh, ampersands. That's correct. Um, the reality is one of the most important things when you're starting a fantasy player is that they are on the field. Mm -hmm. and Step one. That they can get the ball. And Step when, two. When the game started, Gurley was out there. And then for the next, like, the rest of the half, after the first two drives, he pretty much wasn't on the field. And it's not like the guys coming in behind him were any good. They sucked. Well... They sucked. I mean, that's not true because Brian Hill had seven fewer carries than Todd Gurley and yet outgained him by 10 yards. Because I didn't say Todd Gurley was great. 11 for... Yeah, five a carry. I just wanted to... It, on the year, that you have a you have a Kenyon Drake, Chase Edmonds situation happening a little bit in Atlanta. On the year, Brian Hill's a better uh, yards per carry by almost a yard. 
He's catching a higher percentage of passes out of the backfield than Gurley is. And Gurley made another mental error in this game. He ran out of bounds and almost cost them the game again mm -hmm. on a long third down. So all I'm, I'm not making the point that you can't start Todd Gurley, but you are now adding a level of risk to Todd Gurley that could leave you tilted in the first half. They could pull him arbitrarily. You saw Quadri Allison go out uh, on some third downs. It is just... Look, the, the advice that Mike gave on the SiriusXM show yesterday is correct. You want to look at trading away Todd Gurley because he's so touchdown dependent on his fantasy value. Over the previous five weeks, he was the running back four. He was still good this week for fantasy. Yeah. Capitalize because what's happening on the field says it's not going to be sustainable and it could be, uh, you know, the, the, the snaps could start disappearing. So... Um, th that was a frustrating watch. Equally frustrating was DJ Moore, who disappeared for 90% of the game. 57 yeah. minutes until his first catch? Yes, despite him being the first target in the game. Yeah, it was it was bizarre. Just to, to back up for Todd Gurley and Andy. <laughs> oh, Cliff. Whenever I look across. <laughs> yeah, my name is Cliff. Sorry. Uh, you can come over to my place, hang out. There's plenty of room. Ooh, I want to come. I hope you have bathrooms. Yeah. Uh, the the upcoming schedule here for for Todd Gurley next week Denver thirtieth uh, uh, like as in the second worst or third worst matchup for running backs then a bye week Saints plus matchup against the Raiders Saints Chargers Tampa Bay the upcoming schedule for Todd Gurley is very bad if you bought low on Julio Jones when he was banged up it is paying off and it may continue to in a big way Calvin Ridley was hurt in this game now X rays came back negative. Not really, uh, it's kind of like the Kenyon Drake thing. X-rays came back negative. They're doing an MRI on Calvin Ridley. He came out of the game right away, hurting his foot. Um, he's going to be held out at least through the bye, you have to imagine. Have to imagine. So week 11 would be when you get Calvin Ridley back at the soonest. Which, which means you go back into the, uh, is it you know Russell Gage? Do you spot start him? Is it Hayden Hurst? Is it uh, Zacchaeus? What, you know, what is the case for the, the passing game in Atlanta? And I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's Julio. Uh, yeah, it's Julio. You can you can take a dream shot on Russell Gage. That would be the the next man up that I would choose. But you just named a bunch of people. It could also be me, which which says you hopefully don't want to have to rely on Russell Gage either. Did you say Hayden Hurst? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, yeah Hurst would be the number one benefactor to me as long as Julio is there. Now we've had a, a policy. If Julio's not there. And Hurst is out. Matt Ryan oh, isn't yes. a viable option. If Calvin Ridley's not there, are you still comfortable with Ryan? It was a disappointing yes. performance last night. He did not throw a touchdown pass. In fact, between the two quarterbacks in this divisional matchup, you had one touchdown. Or uh, yeah, you had one touchdown pass by Teddy Bridgewater. Um, however, you did have a rushing touchdown from Matt Ryan. Yeah, and, and if you weren't aware, it was a very uh, weathery game. The Weathery. Rain, the, the, well, it was wind and rain. A little bit rain. A ra little bit rain started <laughs> say <pouring>. weathery? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, and that clearly had an effect on the game. Yes, it did. Um, so that, that hampered. And we brought that up a little bit, but obviously it was late in bringing it up because we don't know the weather until um, later in the week. Teddy Bridgewater, to start the week, looked like a great matchup, but we were recommending pivoting. Uh, due to, you know, if the weather was bad. And as it cleared up, it got worse again. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right. Uh, as is the case around the country right now with COVID cases rising, you're seeing that carry itself out into these NFL teams, uh, which is which is unfortunate. We had, I believe, four teams yesterday that are dealing with cases. Another couple of teams today, the Vikings, the Broncos, uh, the Buccaneers have an equipment staff member, and the Chargers canceled practice yesterday after a positive case. By, ah, my Groy. Oh, Ryan Groy tested positive. And then, uh, so uh, these are situations that, like this entire year, you're just going to have to monitor We've been fortunate enough that the majority of these circumstances due to team protocols, due to precautions being taken by the teams and, and contact tracing and, and quarantining players immediately, that we've seen most of these games played. But worth mentioning, just another thing you got to mm -hmm. keep track of. 
In strange news, Julian Edelman underwent a, quote, precautionary <laughs> knee procedure. <laughs> so he had surgery, and he's now going to be placed likely on injured reserve. Can we stop it with this precautionary? Dude, no one has to do like, oh, guys, I'm pretty worried about my knee. Let's no, get, you should we should get surgery. We should go do a surgery real What if quick. this was precautionary so that his value remains uh, – there for next season like, like like precautionary for his contract right like he knew that if he stayed in this lineup with cam newton that his value would diminish i get that's the only thing that makes sense but he had surgery we've been saying for weeks julian edelman does not look good like he, he's avoiding contact he he it drops he, he doesn't look like julian edelman i mean physically he did but athletically it did not look like him and now he's going to be gone for a while cam's most reliable wide receiver, even though he was not really showing up as that. I mean, it is it is sketchy at best for the Patriots pass catchers right now. Is yeah, I mean, you've got Gunnar, Gunnar Olofsky and you've got Demir Bird. And, Jacoby Myers. I oh, mean, yeah, Jacoby Myers might be Julian back. Julian Edelman's career might be done. It might be. He's, he's what, 34, 35 years old, quarterback situations in flux. And, uh, yeah, I, this is how quick it can happen. Joe Mixon, not practicing today, does not look like Mixon will be out there. I will uh, adjust my assertion that he'll get back out there this week. He got the bye week. I don't think he will. Correct. Michael Thomas returned to a practice in a limited fashion on okay. Thursday. I, okay. I read from a local beat reporter who was at the open portion of practice, and that beat reporter said that Michael Thomas practiced everything that the wide receivers do did. He looked without any limitation whatsoever. Oh my! So, so uh, I think there's a chance he's there this week, and that means you're playing him then. Yes, if if okay. if he's out there, I am playing him. I, I I mean, I want. Uh, let me add this to it, so that we can hedge. No, I, <laughs> no, I want to discuss. Maybe it is worth benching him, and you guys can dissuade me. You obviously have the hamstring injury, which it doesn't matter how good you are, how superstar you are. If your hamstring gets re-aggravated, you're done. It can happen to the best of them, like Devonta Adams and Michael Thomas. But you have the, the triple threat, right? The hamstring is one. The matchup is two against the Bears, who have really been bad for quarterbacks and wide receivers. And the Mother Nature is three. That's one of those locations that has the 25-mile-an-hour sustained wins projected. That usually says they don't throw the ball much. Now, granted, Michael Thomas is a shorter route uh, tree type of player. So is there a chance you bench Michael Thomas if he's active because of the, the triple threat there? Probably not. Yeah, I think I would play him. I mean, it's a compelling case, but I don't want to egg on my face. Okay. And uh, when I drafted Michael Thomas to be my number one wide receiver, I'm going to trust that this team has taken the time before right. – uh, to get him back. Healthy. All right, let me give you one pivot option and see. Okay. Your third wide receiver see if we're is. Lying. Yes, your third wide receiver is either Michael Thomas or Devontae Parker. I would go Michael Thomas. Yep. Definitely. Okie dokie. There it is. Hey, Parker has his own questions. He's got uh, a brand new quarterback. Yeah. And he has to decide whether to strain his hamstring or calf. Yes, he also can week. do that. Yep. Deontay, I still hear your face mask against the I'm trying to stay microphone. away from the mic. Well, it's difficult. You haven't done uh, <laughs> a lot of podcasting, Rodrigo. Here, uh, in a helmet is This is why we always say you got to run in pads. That's you gotta, right. you got to podcast in your gear. We, we should be practicing in a helmet more often. Now, did you know that uh, Jason Moore of the Fantasy Footballers has made you his boom, boom kicker multiple times this year? Is of that, are you aware? Of course I knew. When a superstar like that talks about me, okay. word gets back. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Deontay Johnson. Which, which which rhyme has been your favorite? Yeah. Uh, rock. Uh, no, the, the blanket on a ship. Okay. I mean, that was pure. Eat your heart out, Robert Frost. <laughs> Robert Frost. <laughs> oh. Deontay Johnson, full participant in practice. That is great news. I would be playing a player that had 15 targets. Yes. Even though it's the Ravens. Uh, John Brown, full participant in practice. That's great news for Josh Allen. Yes, also great news for Josh Allen. Uh, Stephon Gilmore, Patriots superstar, DB, left practice, got an MRI on his knee. We don't have any further news on it yet, but that's... Was that a precautionary MRI or a regular <laughs> one? <laughs> that's what it remains to be seen. Goodness. 
Jalen Rager is going to play on Sunday against the Cowboys. It helps raise the ceiling of Carson Wentz. He, Love it. He takes a couple deep shots to Rager in every game that Rager's been out there this year. Yeah, but you're not going to start him. No. No. No, I'm not. But soon, and you, perhaps. And, and you are still going to start Travis Fulgham. Yes. yes. Okay. Gungam style. Uh, Jamison Crowder unlikely to play. Brashad Perryman ruled out. Oh, my. Denzel Mims. Okay. Uh, Adam, you have an insight to I do. this wide receiver depth chart. Now, you obviously have uh, other stars like Braxton Berrios to consider. Mm -hmm. Have you seen him play? Uh, Five-star player. Five feet tall. Yeah, I have. Uh, Adam, if – I mean, you're from New York, so you probably mm -hmm. have a gauge on that other – Mm -hmm. roster mm -hmm. sterling, i love sabaros uh sterling ship <laughs> you're right <laughs> sterling she that's your favorite local joint oh, have sabaros? you ever had it uh <laughs> sterling shepherd or your young rookie denzel mims this week with no brashad perryman no jameson mm. crowder mm. <sighs> I, I was asking for a friend i i will say this uh if you thought hyperdrive was impressive just wait just wait until you see my offense with none of my star players and just you, a rookie wide receiver. Are you going plaid? <laughs> oh, yes. Are we've, you going plaid? We're going from stripes to plaid, my okay. friend. So uh, Mims or Shepard? Shepard. I would play I would play Shepard. Okay. All right. All right, Adam. Also, I want somebody to let me play Mims. Can somebody just tell me hey, to play Mims? I, took, I say Mims is taking up to 100. Double-digit fantasy points this week. Yeah, but you took MVS up to 100 before. Yeah, so did that guy. I'm losing confidence. <laughs> hey, you know, don't bring me into this. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, here's some news. We found out about, well, there were Gardner Minshew benching rumors. Mm -hmm. Then we found out he has some fractures in his thumb and some ligament strains. Then we found out that head coach Doug Marone in Jacksonville likes to get nuts. And then we find out this morning that the expectation is that Jake Luton, yes, Jake Luton. Free. Sixth round rookie. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Oh, you were trying to say. Is that a gluten free? You're darn right it was. Jake you, Luton free. You just think free. you can throw the word free in there and make it funny? I, I think I did. I proved <laughs> my point. Jake Luton is set to potentially start in week nine for Jacksonville. So we did have a conversation about James Robinson on the Sirius XM show yesterday. And the fact that, look, uncertainty at the quarterback position, we just talked about it with Devontae Parker. It gives you some pause, and mm -hmm. it's going to give you pause with this offense and its ability to move the football. Now, perfect example. When Dak Prescott left, we said, well, Zeke's got to carry the load now, right? This is Zeke's team. Right. I think the same thing when you put a rookie Jake Luton in at quarterback for Jacksonville. This has got to be James Robinson's team. Be careful. Mm -hmm. because the defense knows that. And the defense knows it doesn't have to do much against Jake Luton. And also get the defense playing Jake Luton. Yeah, I would do that. Uh, Aaron Jones still didn't practice. Uh, Miles Sanders, Mark Ingram. Uh, is this right, Brooks? Carson, Hyde, and Homer all skip practice? Yes. Just the running back stay home. They hit the arcade. Okay. Uh, we'll have some updated information on that backfield and on... Uh, San Francisco's backfield as practice reports come in later today. We'll get that out on socials. We'll get that out in the Injury Blitz podcast over at jointhefoot.com. And Carson, we know, is a game-time decision. Or is supposed to be. Supposed to be, yeah. Maybe we'll get more information about that. And Mike will be live. Mike Wright, uh, who is not, oh, he's not with handsome. us today, but he'll be live on Sunday morning with uh, game day updates, things of that nature. So mm -hmm. we've got a lot of matchups to get through. Let's do it. Fantasy Forecast. All right, we uh, we covered a number of matchups on yesterday's show. Patriots, Bills, Titans, Bengals, Raiders, Browns, Colts, Lions, Vikings, Packers. We're kicking it off today. Oh, yeah, finally. Um, Adam, we've got the New York football Jets at 0-7. I don't know if you heard the very kind comments from uh, Chris Jones. What, uh, what what did he say? Chris Jones. Yeah, a superstar defensive lineman for the Kansas City Chiefs. An incredible person, kind. And he, he he reminded everyone that we are, by, by we I mean the New York Jets, my team. Sure. We are a good team. Just the, the fact that we haven't won a game, people forget that we're good. Yeah, and that's on them. 
I mean, it, that's, it on, that's on people. It's ignorant. All right. Let's get to the facts then. All right. 0-7, the New York Jets. <laughs> Implied point total of 14.8, despite averaging 10 points a game. Taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, an implied point total of 34.3 points, a 19.5 point favorite, 49 point Erroneous. over under. Erroneous. People forget, right? Yes. They forget you're good. Yeah, Las to... Vegas forgets that we're good. If people would just close their eyes and I not... close my eye and I look at the team. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Number you know, two. I knew that this would be funny, but I, I, I didn't really know how much Mike would lean into it through the duration. And, and you know. Who's that? I mean, Adam. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start with the Jets and let's speak briefly about options here. LaMichael P. Ryan, he scored last week. I wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole. Frank Gore, I would not consider at all. Crowder Perryman are going to be out. Denzel Mims is the dart throw in this matchup because the Chiefs are going to be winning for the duration of the game, and the Jets still have to take possession of the football according to National Football League rules. So Denzel Mims last week, he led the team in yardage. He had four receptions on seven targets, 42 yards. Over under six receptions for Denzel Mims in this game. Mm, I'll take the under. Yeah, right. Sorry. That was another way of me trying to get permission to play Denzel Mims. Uh, if you had said five and a half, I think six is the line he hits. So I'll push. Okay. Over under five and a half, you'll, you'll take the over. Yes. All right. On the other side, Mahomes, yes. Clyde edwards alaire yes. People want to know, Lev Bell, are you actively finding a way to get him into the lineup? He stinks. Uh, oh, let's let's yeah, go to Adam. somebody else here. Rodrigo. I recuse myself from this conversation. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I do think that Lev Bell is – if you're telling me, okay, do I want to start Devin Singletary or Le'Veon Bell, um, I, I would go Le'Veon Bell. I would start Lev Bell. Because the offense here, the implied team total of 34 points, points the weather is one of the games we're not worried about this weekend you expect this team to be absolutely smashing to the point where if you brought you know the, the Andy Reid has talked about they brought in Lev Bell in a way to help alleviate some of the workload on Clyde Edwards Alaire they want to keep him healthy well if you're up 20 points which is the line you're going to not just keep running out your first string running back over and over. So I think he gets enough carries. If he gets 10 carries and three or four receptions against this defense, he should be he should be an okay start. He's certainly not someone that you have to start. But if I believe he'll have more carries in this game than Clyde Edwards-Alaire. It's certainly possible. And the Jets are 28th against fantasy running backs. The, with the point spread, <laughs> it, it, Lev Bell is in play here. So if you believe that, then wouldn't you say you – almost must start Le'Veon? Because I see Clyde Edwards-Alaire as, as someone that I must start. Huge home favorites. Uh... I don't see them really very much different in this game. Okay. They're going to afford Lev the opportunity to uh, exact his revenge. And he is prepared and ready and able, and uh, the Jets are accommodating and going to be on the receiving end of it. This is the time, Lev. Yeah. If, if, if you want to show the world that you still got it and that – we made a mistake over here in New York. Yeah. All right. Uh, it has not been a an advantageous thing for fantasy football players to, to go beyond Tyreek Hill at, in the wide receiver room for Kansas City. One week, Demarcus Robinson makes a few catches. McCall Hardman really has not been a viable option. I released Hardman. I'm a Mahomes fantasy manager. He's not worth keeping because if I can't play him now without Sammy Watkins, when mm -hmm. am I going to play him? Yeah. Right. Travis Kelsey, you always play him. Anything else from that game that you want to highlight? Nope. Play your Chiefs. Sit your Jets. Hey. The Los Angeles Rams at 5-2 and two take on the Miami Dolphins. At 3-3, three and three, the debut of uh, Tua Tungaviola. I, I probably failed that. Well, that sounded right. Uh, the Rams are three-and-a-half point road favorites. It's a 46-point over-under. Aaron Donald is part of the welcoming party for Tua. Congratulations. This is uh, this is going to be very, very interesting because we have come to rely on Miles Gaskin, Devontae Parker, and we all want to know, can we continue to? I, I think you can rely on uh, Miles Gaskin to a degree because 
you know, when there's clarity in a backfield and one player is getting such a large percentage of the work, you know, he's, I don't think his ceiling is high here, but his floor is high. And that's what you're looking for in those mid-level running backs. So he's in play. As far as the other options outside of Devontae Parker, Mike Gesicki, Preston Williams, those are players I'm really not wanting to start. I'm, I want to hold on to Gesicki, not drop him necessarily, because Tua could come out and, and utilize the tight end. Tua could come out and completely look mm -hmm. away. We don't know his tendencies yet. We haven't seen him in the NFL. Uh, I do think that Devontae Parker will stay his number one read because he's the clear he's best, the best receiver, receiver yeah. on the team. Um, so outside of, outside of starting Parker and Gaskin, I think everybody else is just a hold, including Tua. In fact, Tua isn't a player I would – pick up yet to hold, but I just want to wait and see on everybody else. I'm actually pretty concerned about Devontae Parker in this game. He's going to face Jalen Ramsey. He's dealing with a groin. He's left some games early, and we don't have any, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick will just chuck the ball. I think this will be more game management and protecting of Tua. You're not going to let him get pummeled in the backfield, which means you're not going to have a lot of deep drops. You're not going to have a lot of downfield in his inaugural game. I have I, if I, if we had a sits of the week, it would be Devontae Parker. Uh, you know that that's that's a fair assertion with all the variables. And over the last six weeks, you know the Rams they've only given up twenty one point one fantasy points per game to the entire wide receiver position. That's the fewest in the league over the last six weeks. So I think you do bring up a good point. Maybe if you have the ability to use caution with Parker, do it there too. All right, here's here's a question for you: the Rams, Jared Goff. He hasn't been very kingly this year. Miami's defense is actually better than a lot of people realize. They're fifth against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. And uh, this team is still predicated on a rushing attack and a defense that's been stout this year. Is Jared Goff a sit this week against Miami? I think Jared Goff is a sit this week, yes. And Goff my or Stafford? Ooh. I, would, Ooh. I would go Goff. I think of them almost the same I in do. terms of their discipline appointment to fantasy players yeah I, we've I, at least seen a couple games from golf this sure. year yeah i agree the, the reality for this game is where do you beat the dolphins their 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 secondary has gotten better they have been locking it down on the passing game but they can easily be beat in the running game and when you match that with the rams who have been winning their games by running the ball if that's the way they win and then Tua isn't able to keep up with a, a good Rams defense, I could see this being a game where Goff does very little. So Daryl Henderson, to me, is someone I would love to start. Yeah, he, yeah. He's been getting so many carries. I mean, the, the last three weeks, 15 carries, 14 carries, 15 carries in a winnable matchup. He's, he's in my lineup. Right now, the Rams have the third most rushing yards. They are number one. Uh, if you look at the football outsiders metric, number one in adjusted line yards, compare that to Miami, who is allowing the second highest rush success rate. I mean, this this is the formula. This is the mixture for Daryl Henderson to have a good game. I think you can play Jared Goff. It will it will just come down to the the coin flip of the touchdowns. Like, do they does Cooper Cup get the touchdown, or does it end, is Daryl Henderson run it in? And uh, it seems like it will won't go to a tight end that you can predict right now. Higby is still questionable. Everett is missing the walkthrough with an illness. And then Munt ended up with some receptions last game. I mean, are you rolling Everett back out there if he's the no. guy? Okay. No, there's there's much better options on the waiver wire. Who are you starting between Woods and Cup? If you had to pick one of them. Goodness. Uh, probably Cup. Yeah, I think so too. This, this projects, like I said, to be a – not a Jared Goff game necessarily, more of a slow game, which means the possession receiver, the volume guy, probably won't be as valuable. You're hoping to get a touchdown, and a touchdown is usually Cup's game. All right, here is an exciting matchup. The Pittsburgh Steelers at 6-0, and taking on the 5-1 and Baltimore Ravens. Ravens four-point home favorites. It's a 46-and-a-half point over-under. Can you hit that button for me, Al? Oh, I'm in on this one. Yeah. Andy's almost upset of the week. Yeah, I, I in our office pool, I took the Steelers to cover. I did as well. Yeah, this is a game where, you know, you want a measuring stick for where 
Lamar Jackson is, you're about to get it. Mm -hmm. And he can come out and he can shut us all up and show us that he hasn't had to do a lot, right? He hasn't been put in that position. And he can go up against this Pittsburgh defense, which is seventh against quarterbacks, third against running backs, you know, likely without Mark Ingram, and go out there and just put it all on display and prove us wrong. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I I need to see it to believe it, and I haven't seen Lamar drive the ball downfield. I, I think if I'm Lamar, I'm terrified of the pass rush, and I'm terrified of trying to, you know, throw that ball into the middle of the field where Minka Fitzpatrick is roaming and they're they're – taking advantage of opportunities out there and, you know, a fumble or a, an interception could be the difference between this game. So, you know, that being said, uh, you know, a lot of people asking the question, am I playing Lamar Jackson or am I playing blank? Is it, yeah. you know, Carson Wentz? Is it uh, Josh Allen? Yeah, it's, it's really uh, ironic. It's a terrible week jo for the pivot uh, Justin options. Herbert. Woo. Yeah, Justin Herbert. Um, I mean, and Carson Wentz, those are names that need to be at least considered. It's, it's tough because think about last year, right? Last year, Lamar Jackson was scorching the earth. He was so far and away better than the quarterback, too. He was unstoppable every single week of the season, a top 12 quarterback. Well, except one, and that was against his only game against the Pittsburgh Steelers mm -hmm. where he was the quarterback 17. Now you've got him with some passing issues. They're coming off the bye. Maybe they figure it out. I'm certainly not going to act bet against Lamar Jackson for being able to get it done on the ground for fantasy but when you look at the matchup and you say this is a fast defensive line this is a defensive line you know what can run him down um, or at least get him to the sideline quick enough to stop him so the passing game is going to be necessary he's so and, good uh, he is he's I he's, love watching him play with my rankings this week Lamar Jackson has been my most difficult quarterback to rank because I keep wanting to move him down, but then all the weather issues are like, you know, you brought up Josh Allen. It, it's, you know, 25 mile an hour winds and rainy there. Do, do I start that over Lamar Jackson? No. Last year, the one game that they actually played uh, where Lamar played because he sat out in week 17 against Pittsburgh, 161 passing yards, one passing touchdown, three picks, 70 rushing yards. If I had to predict a line for Lamar Jackson, it looks exactly like that, which is not – that's not an end-of-the-world line when you have 70 rushing yards and a, and a passing touchdown. But uh, I don't expect much more than that. So if you're looking for ceiling, I don't know if you can get it against Pittsburgh's defense, which looks better this year than they even did last year. For the running backs for Baltimore, uh, right now you kind of – you have to make the assumption that Mark Ingram is going to miss. Uh, he had the injury two weeks ago. He still hasn't practiced, even though they they had a, a full week of rest, a full bye week. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards. I know that the, the matchup is not ideal, so this isn't like, oh, I'm smashing this guy into my lineup. But running backs, it's tough in the streets right now. Uh, where do you prefer? Do you prefer J.K. Dobbins, hoping that they let the rookie get some work, or do you go with the Gus bus, who actually saw the work uh, two weeks ago when Mark Ingram left the game? I, I, I'm I curious. We're the same, Jay. Yeah, I, I don't really want to start either, to be honest. But if I had to pick between them, I would go J.K. Dobbins. He's going to touch the ball far less than Gus Edwards. But if they want to get it done, it's going to be through the air. They need to use the screen game and the dump-offs. Gus Edwards doesn't catch the ball. Gus Edwards doesn't get thrown Correct. the ball. So if he doesn't get a touchdown, he could get 20 carries in this game and and be bad for fantasy against this Pittsburgh Steelers lineup. That's so I don't want to start either, but I would take the receiving hope of JK Dobbins. Completely agree. You're looking for one big play. Dobbins is more capable of that. It's what Miles Sanders did against Pittsburgh. It's what AJ Brown did against Pittsburgh. Who's the highest odds of one big play? It's Dobbins. Hollywood Brown, a sketchy start this week. Uh Jason has him the highest. Mike and I are in the forties with Hollywood Brown. It is uh, not somebody that I want to play. Yeah. I mean, the Steelers are 23rd against fantasy wide receivers, so they, they have given up some performances. Uh, I have Hollywood. I wish I could pivot away, but I am I will be playing him. I've got a good feel about yeah. him this week. I don't know if it's just my love, but, I mean, the reality is the, the, the matchup fantasy points-wise, that's where they're going to need to go. He's not the – 
you know, I whiffed on OBJ against Pittsburgh in, with the same metrics, so I'm I'm hesitant with Brown that struggled. Yeah, I get yeah, it. no, I I to- I totally get it. But the nice thing is, this is one of those games where I don't think Lamar Jackson and the Ravens are destroying them and then able to run the ball. If if that happens, obviously, then that's one of the issues with starting Hollywood Brown. But you want to start Hollywood Brown in the tough matchups, in the matchups where it's like. They need to throw the ball. They might be down in the game, and and the Steelers are pretty good against tight ends. And that you know they got two options here. They've uh, got uh, Mark Andrews and Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Rodrigo, do you struggle kicking with so much of your eyeballs up into your helmet? Well, this helmet is very large. Okay. Um, I think... I'm just surprised you can kick so well. <laughs> yeah. I I feel like with I with your need... eyeballs in the helmet. Yeah. I. I... I need a pillow. You at, need an equipment on, manager to. Yeah, on top of my head. The, the, if you're on the YouTubes, the helmet should be here. Mm-hmm. But when I let go, <laughs> I just fall. You kind of look it. like a like almost like a kid in a Halloween costume, it, as opposed to the real Rodrigo Blankenship. Almost, but I am yeah. the real Rodrigo. Keep an eye out for a possible trade uh, trade low situation uh, for for everyone on the Pittsburgh Steelers. They are. Deontay, Juju. Yeah, in, in James Conner. I'm saying just, just keep an eye out because you got to project and expect tougher uh, performances here, lower output from the fantasy options for the Steelers. But Dallas, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, those are the next three matchups for him, and people are already a little bit sketchy on like Deontay Johnson. So just, just saying those are something you should keep an eye out for. Uh, all right. Let's. Uh, by the way, I'm looking over there and I see Brooks. Did you dress up as Paul Giamatti for Halloween? Oh, didn't have to dress up. Looking right. good, my man. You seem to do that every Halloween, and I don't get it. Uh, Los Angeles, the Chargers, two and four, taking on the two and four Broncos. Divisional game. Chargers, three and a half point favorites. Forty four and a half point over under. Mike, are you ready for Justin Herbert again? You're darn right, I am. Yeah, you putting him out there? Yes. All right, I see him in a lot of fantasy lineups this week. The shoe's going to drop. You know that, right? The shoe is going to drop on Justin Herbert. Is it? It, it, it will. Is. It, they, it, 100%, 100% will. And all players in history, the shoe is dropped in this situation. And it won't be this week. Okay. This week is a funnel defense against the, 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 the Broncos. The Broncos are outstanding in the run game, and they have been middle of the pack in, in the receiving game. This, I expect to be another good matchup for Herbert. There's no weather concerns. I, If I could pivot to Herbert over all of my other great options that I, that I just really liked this week, you know, I've got Josh Allen. I, you know, I've, I've, I've liked uh, Derek Carr's matchup, but all of these uh, issues this week with the weather, I, I would love to be able to put Herbert in my I mind. think it'll be good, not great for Justin Herbert this week. My Same take that I had on Teddy Bridgewater last night. This is a game that the Chargers low over under. Denver can't score right now. Denver cannot <laughs> score touchdowns. They miss Cortland Sutton. They, I just think that Herbert's not going to have to do quite as much as we would hope. But we'll find out. Uh, he, it's If you want to stay in the flames, I do not blame you one bit. I just don't think we're going to get a top 10 performance. I, I agree that the ceiling is a little bit limited because I don't expect this to be a high-scoring game. And so his big 40-point fantasy weeks he's been doing, that's not what I'm projecting when I say the shoe doesn't drop. I, I just think he has a solid around the quarterback 10. All right, Justin Jackson or Joshua Kelly in this one? Oh, man. Justin Jackson. Yeah, I'm still going to stick with Justin Jackson. Hopefully a, a couple more days off have helped him heal up. Mike Williams, are you willing to take the shot, take the chance? Yes. Yes, I think you have to be willing to take the chance every week. You're going to get the duds. Tim Patrick, Mike Williams, same matchup. Well, Tim Patrick has also been beat up. He's not practicing the last couple of days. So that 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 uh, Has Mike Williams ever practiced, though? <laughs> That's a good point. Um, I'm just saying the decision might be made that I, we don't know if Tim Patrick is going to play. Jerry, Judy, Mike Williams. Judy. Okay. Uh, Noah Fant confidence level right now. First two weeks of the season, he was the tight end three, tight end eight. Lots has changed in Denver. Yeah, a lot has changed, including the health of Noah Fant. Is, I said lots has changed? Yeah. Nice. L- lots has changed, uh, uh, including the health of Noah Fant. He vented a little bit on socials. It sounds like people 
gave him the business. Unfortunately, is oh like fantasy players? Yeah, no, that oh, sucks. Fantasy yeah. players don't uh, give players. Stop the tagging players. On, don't end up. You'll end up like Adam Gase if you keep doing that. <laughs> that is and just, correct. If you see the video right now, it's not a place you want to be. No, it's not. It's not. You, I, I think you can still start Noah Fant. You're, you're, yes, I you're agree. You're chasing the targets, and the targets have been there. The last three games he's played, 10 targets, 6 targets, 7 targets. For a tight end, that's what you're looking for. You've certainly been disappointed, but you've been disappointed with tight ends. So if you don't have one of the great guys, I'm still throwing him out in my lineup. I, I think it would be a question. You know, I've had the question the last couple of weeks, Jared Cook versus Noah Fant. What about Fant or Henry this exact game? I would go Fant. Henry's been a disappointment. I would go as Henry. Well. Yeah, the man. What what are Henry's finishes the last couple of weeks? I got that for you, Mike. His finishes the last. Uh, I, mean, I don't. So I don't have. I, it I you, have Mike. it. He was 29th this past week, also on seven targets. The bye week before, three weeks ago, he was uh, the tight end ten with eight targets, and then tight end uh, 27 the week prior to that with four targets. Yeah, I'll go with Noah Fant. the The matchup is better for him. The, the Chargers the last six weeks. 22nd against fantasy tight ends. On top of that, the Tim Patrick health concerns, I think they, they might have to rely on Fant a little bit more. Yeah, I think you guys talked me into it. And if one of those Upside two for players Fant, yeah. is going to break a big, long play, it's Fant. It's not Hunter. No. <laughs> no. He's Unless still he... searching for the H. <laughs> New uh, Orleans, 4-2. and, and two. Just a quick reminder, because uh, we, we talked about it on the serious show, player you want to trade for. I want to trade for Keenan Allen right now. Four full games with Justin Herbert, 10, 19, 11, and 13 targets. That is a uh, historic pace for, for Keenan Allen. It's buying high, but the schedule is great. I think Keenan Allen is a player that you want to go after right now. Okay. I mostly believe you. A <laughs> little hesitant because of the shoe dropping with Herbert and because of Keenan Allen – you omitted the injured game, obviously, and that's a problem sure. with Allen, too. But um, I mostly believe you, Mike. That's good, oh, right? I, thank you. Well, I, I'll take mostly. Especially, I mean, the way you look this morning. What, that's saying something. Do I look bad? Well, I, less trustworthy based on the current outfit. You look happy, though. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I've been working on my smile. Doesn't smell great, though. Mm. New Orleans, 4-2. and two. The Bears, 5-2. and two. Low over under 43.5 points. Saints are 4.5 point favorites in this one. Implied point total for Chicago, just 19 and a half. It does not look good on offense lately. And then New Orleans could be getting Michael Thomas back in this game. We already know Alvin Kamara can drive this entire offense. So uh, here we are with Drew Brees, decision-making out of a game against Mahomes, outside of a game against Mahomes. Chicago's defense has not allowed a top 12 quarterback performance since week 11 of 2018. Holy Toledo. So that is a steer clear of Drew Brees. No real reason to yeah. play him. Yeah, and then this is one of those now four games that project to have extremely bad weather for the passing game. It's not bad weather in general. It's not going to be raining, only 6% chance of showers. It's not super cold. So this is, this is you know, you're not scared of Alvin Kamara, but the reason why the line has come down so much ac across a couple of games um, is because people have been betting the under due to the wind. This is one of those. When you add the matchup, I don't love – any of the receiving options on really either side of the ball, depending on, on Allen Robinson. Has he – do we have an update on the concussion protocol? Didn't practice on Thursday. Yeah, so he's not going to – I can't imagine he plays, in which case, yikes on this game. Weathery, of very Kamara. weathery. Yeah. A little bit rain. Allen Robinson, yeah, a, a problem. Could you find value someplace else? I mean, they're playing from behind. Anthony Miller spot start. Darnell Mooney spot start. Yeah, Darnell Mooney. Cry yourself to sleep. Spot start. <laughs> Darnell Mooney, I think, can be a, a spot start if Allen Robinson isn't there. He's looked good as a rookie. Uh, the secondary has been, you know, a, a problem for the Saints on the season. Someone has to catch the ball. It's like Denzel Mims. Desperation. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're. I'm not saying, hey, go get him. He's a great play in the high wind, but he's got enough talent to get it done when they have to play 60 minutes of football. You can play Jared Cook. Uh, you can play Jimmy Grandpa. Mike start of the week. Mm -hmm. If you are, um, you know, in the pray for touchdown tight end category, yeah. It, if you're David praying, Montgomery is the pray for touchdown running back category. Yeah. If you if you're praying for a touchdown from a tight end, you might as well take the one who leads all tight ends and red zone targets, and that is Jimmy Grandpa. 
The 49ers at 4-3 and three take on the 5-1 and one Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks are three-point home favorites. It's a 54-point over-under. We got a note in here from our staff. It says, this ain't your mama's Seattle defense. They mm. have allowed the most yards through six games in the last all years. That is uh, NFL history, the most yards through six games, which is why Mike is playing the matchup with Jimmy Garoppolo. He hasn't shown us that he's willing to overcome a matchup, but he doesn't have to here. He's got uh, it laid out before him, and with Seattle favored in this game, the passing game should be uh, heavily involved. Yeah, like so. the, like the last matchup, Drew Brees. No, I'll, I'll play Jimmy Garoppolo over Drew Brees this week. I would as well. Jimmy G or Josh Allen? Josh Allen. Okay, that's me too. And, unless you wake up on Sunday and things look really bad up there. Burrow, Tannehill, still playing them over Jimmy G? Uh, Tannehill for sure. Burrow. You're right on the line there? Yeah, right on the line. 49ers running back situation is still a mystery. Tevin Coleman. He was designated to return. He's got a 21-day practice window. But we do not have a status update unless uh, somebody around me knows something I don't. No, I haven't heard. And if he's active, this, are you benching Hasty? Are you benching McKinnon? This one's a little bit tougher uh, when you're talking about – uh, like last week it was uh, Coach Shanahan made the comment, hopefully we get Jeff Wilson back. My name is Jeff. And then Jeff got in limited practices the entire week. Uh, Tevin Coleman's coming back from the IR. You and know? He has been, he's been he been practicing, though. Right, but I'm saying like J Jeff didn't miss a whole bunch of time uh, and then got in the limited practices. So it's this isn't an identical situation, even though – on the surface, it feels like. It just wanted to clarify it. It is sure. slightly different. And you have to account for the fact that before the injury, Tevin Coleman looked like trash. Yeah, it's like he 12 did. carries for 14 yards. Then he got injured. That being said, if, he's, if he is active in this game, I'm certainly playing him. If that happens, I don't have the fortitude to start J Jermichael Hasty. If Coleman is active, Jermichael Hasty is not uh, a player I'm willing to start. If Coleman misses this game, then I'm full steam ahead with Michael Hastings. Funny thing is that Jeff Wilson was complete trash before last week, that, too. That is so. That is um, yeah, you, you, it's a risk. I mean, it's a risk at that position. It's a risk on a team that runs the ball incredibly, and as Jason has said all week, if you get the right guy, it's a home run. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's incredible these backfields are facing one another, because you have Carson Hyde, Homer. Is Hyde the safest play right now? It seems because like if it. Carson's back, he's not getting all the work. Well, not only is he not getting all the work, but he could very easily leave the game with re-injury. Um, he's pretty much off my startability board. I agree. Um, because of the late start, the game time decision, you already have the fact that if you don't have bad a, matchup. a late game pivot in a bad matchup, that if he's active, he could be re-aggravated he is on my bench for sure this week and if he goes out and has a surprise great game I'll just take my lumps you got to be fine being wrong every now and then Carlos Hyde is is or not Carlos Hyde um uh, Chris Carson is on my bench all right Brandon Ayuk Mike yes. Mike has him as a taking it up to 100 player uh, I still think Kendrick Bourne is somebody worth mentioning as a desperation play I'd probably play Kendrick Bourne in this matchup over any of the other Chicago options at wide receiver, for yes. example. Lockett, Metcalf, yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kittle, yep, for sure. Sunday Night Football, the Cowboys at 2-5, and five, taking on the 2-4-1 Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles, nine-point favorites, 43-point over-under. Gives them an implied point total of 26. Cowboys just 17 points. Yeah. Uh, Somebody has to win this ball game, and I think it will be Philadelphia. Dallas is just – they've looked terrible on defense. They're allowing 200-plus yards rushing as a team in three of the past four games. Oh, it's so sad that Miles Sanders yeah, is Yeah, I knew that's what you were thinking. Uh. It, it, uh, it's, it stinks, and it, it is an opportunity for Boston Scott. Um, it, it's – it's just unfortunate Miles Sanders doesn't get to take advantage of this opportunity. No, mm -hmm. what if what if he is active? He didn't practice on I will Thursday. Play him. But if he's active, you you're playing Miles Sanders? I will. I uh, can't imagine not playing him. I would as well. The the, I mean, what, is... What's hard though is I, I don't know if we're gonna get a definitive uh, announcement before the the opening games on Sunday that a Sunday night football player is gonna play. Like yeah. if if you've got 
let's say you, you, you got Boston. You managed to pick up Boston Scott, and he's been filling in for you while Miles is out. Yeah. Then if Miles plays, I'll make the switch. But you, you probably don't have a a pivot option, like because Tampa Bay, New York, right now they're the Monday game. Is could there, be Fournette, Freeman. Yeah, may, maybe Fournette. Uh, Gallman. You know, Gallman. Well, go, yeah, Wayne Gallman, because you're you're playing the game of is Devontae Freeman going to play? Because if Freeman plays, then Wayne Wayne Gallman in an already terrible matchup is you you want do Ew. not want anything to do with that. But Fournette, I think Fournette is a good option, and Fournette might be on your waiver wire. So if you want to play the if you want to take that dance with Miles Sanders, Fournette is a good pivot. Part of the fact that I'm not expecting Sanders to be out there lends itself to, you know, Carson Wentz carrying the load again. He's running the football. He has a rushing touchdown in five of the last six games. He's my start of the week. Uh, you know, more rushing touchdowns on the year than Lamar or Watson or Tannehill or Russell Wilson combined. So Wentz is just basically running wild, finding Travis Fulgham, maybe Jalen Rager, and maybe Boston Scott in this game. Zeke. You, you know, you're kind of stuck with Ezekiel Elliott. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you this, Adam. It seems like a question yes. for you. Uh, do you just kind of clench your cheeks and bear it? Do you just start? Well, first off, I've never clenched my cheeks. Okay. Uh, so I'm not familiar with that uh, phrase. phrase. All right. But, yeah, I I Ezekiel Elliott, the volume is there, man. You you just got to play him. And with Zach Martin progressing through the protocols, practicing in full, um, if if he's back, that would be that would be phenomenal for Zeke in a in a in a somewhat tough matchup. Now, if if I had a pump the brakes yeah. player of the week, to me it would be Amari Cooper. Yep, that is a player I really really want to pivot off of and bench if possible, even though he's been good because. Now we're down to third string quarterback play with Darius Slay. The matchup you're going to look and you're going to say, "Oh, the matchup looks good." The Eagles give up a lot of points in their secondary, but always to the wide receiver two and three. They have been Darius Slay's been locking down on the wide receiver one for opponents. So the com the the triple threat here of uh, low over under implied team total. A lot of triple threats today. Oh man, I mean singing, dancing. Uh, what's the what, third one? Acting. acting. That's there you go. <laughs> A lot of triple threats out there, <laughs> but I, I just, I worry a lot because one, you don't know that he's going to be the, the number one targeted guy. You don't know the tendencies of uh, Danucci and he's got the hardest, most difficult matchup on the other side of the field. So. Amari Cooper or Hollywood Brown. Uh, that's right. That's uh, terrible I'll because I'll take Amari Cooper. He's going to catch seven passes no matter who's the quarterback. Okay. Amari Cooper or Cooper Cup. Against Miami. Cup. I'll, I'll go Cup. Yeah. Okay, and last one, Amari Cooper or T. Higgins versus Tennessee. Ooh, T. Higgins. I'll go okay. Coop. I'll go Cooper for sure. Start okay. of the week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Cooper is not a ceiling play. No. I mean, Ben DiNucci is probably starting this game. Start your Eagles defense. Uh avoid CeeDee Lamb and Gallup. Avoid Dalton Schultz. Play Travis Fulgham. Richard Rodgers is Jason's start of the week at the tight end position. Uh, so there you go. Dallas defense, start them. Tampa Bay, 5-2. and two. Giants, 1-6. and six, The Monday night game. Tampa Bay, 12-point road favorites. I mean, this is not very far off from the Kansas City matchup in the sense that you know Kansas City's at home, 19.5-point favorites. The Buccaneers are on the road. They're 12-point favorites, almost two touchdowns. 45-point over-under gives the Giants just 16 points in this game. So the question I have for you guys is, can you find fantasy value on the Giants side of the ball at all in this game, or is it just uh, is it a Jets policy and you're just benching everybody? Um, it, it's really, really close. I do think that on a in a PPR league, uh, Sterling Shepard is okay because Tampa Bay is going to put up a lot of points, and the Giants are going to have to throw the ball, and he's going to get – I don't expect a good game for Shepard. I expect a high – floor game I would be surprised if he leaves this game with fewer than six receptions that might only be for 60 yards but in a half PPR league I think you're fine there I don't want the running backs here with the offensive line not practicing against this Tampa Bay matchup I mean look what it did for Josh Jacobs last week who was great and now you're saying either a hurt Devonta Freeman or a Wayne Gallman <laughs> no thank you or a Wayne Gallman yeah yeah all right. On the other side of the ball, 
what decisions are you making for Tampa Bay? Brady, you play him. He's been great. 18-4 to four touchdown interception ratio, five touchdown week. He is getting it going in this offense. He won't have Chris Godwin this week, but he still has the fallback plan of Mike Evans, Rob Gronkowski, Scotty Miller. Yeah, it's got to be a good week for Brady, does it not? Plant and no. <laughs> yeah. He's energized himself with some plant fuel. Uh, it should be. It should be a, a decent game for 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 Brady. Prime time Brady right now, too. Mm -hmm. Prime uh, time show of the world. Yeah, you got it, Antonio Brown on the sidelines. He's going to want to show off. Say, just wait to see what you're going to get. I'll say it could. But the, the, the hesitancy of you're talking about the shoe dropping for Justin Herbert. Now, different player, obviously. But if Denver can't score against the Chargers and you're worried about Herbert, Daniel Jones and the New York Giants against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers – I mean, do they just – is do you have the faith that Bruce Arians kind of has been known to run up a score when he has an opportunity? It, like, the, the touchdowns may not be bountiful. This, may, they don't need to be bountiful for Tom Brady. I, I get it, but this team is one that they do run up the score. They want to win big. They want to show off. They want to make statements. Over the last five seasons, Tom Brady's covered in 75% of the games he's been a double-digit favorite in – and 77% of the games he's faced a team that's under 500. He, he's a step on the throat of your opponent type of guy, not a run the clock Well, they're going to score four times. So where do, what does it break down to? I mean, that's the implied point total. That's what I would expect. And, you know, it, it, at least two of those are Brady. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's a question about yardage. You know, comparing it to Herbert, I think the Giants' defense is a step back from what Denver is too. Um, but, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I mean, not having Godwin or Brown out there yet, Maybe it seems like some of the ceiling's down, but I wouldn't be surprised if Gronkowski ends up with a pair in this one. He's a good start in this game. Agreed. How are you handling the running backs of Ronald Jones, who was on a tear, immediately seated way to the new, quote, nickel running back, Ugh. as Bruce Arians has, has coined Leonard Fournette? When you have a chance to throw the ball to Leonard Fournette, yeah, you, you have gotta, to take it. You, you have to take that shot every single time. Uh, so how are you handling those two guys? Are you still... Are you playing them because the matchup is still mighty fine? Yep. Are you only playing Ronald? I Where think are you, you can, at, Jay? I think you can start both players. I would play Ronald first because of the giant line and the fact that, you know, uh, rushing touchdowns I, I still think will be his. Um, and I think you can uh, play Leonard Fournette because he's – it's nice when the uh, – the the second running back on a team that you're wondering if you could start gets the targets because it really – it says that both players are startable. It's kind of like the Nick Chubb, uh, Kareem, Hunt. Kareem Hunt situation. Just neither player is quite as good. Also, an injury update for you, Foot Clan. Joe Mixon officially out. Oh, Giovanni time. We had the exact same thing happen last Friday. Joe Mixon declared out during the show. So let's uh, move on. We've got one more segment. A reminder, Mike will be live Sunday live one hour before kickoff. Uh, the Foot Clan game day alerts will be over at jointhefoot.com, getting you ready to go. Prop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. All right, weather or not, I'm calling a bluff here. Derek Carr, I'm going to take more Whew. than 281 passing yards against Cleveland. He's done it four out of the last five games. Derek Carr has been on a roll yardage-wise. Cleveland just gave up 406 yards to Joe Burrow. This game, outside of weather question marks, which we're still a few days away, it projects to be a pass-heavy, barn-burner type of game, just like we saw last week with Cincinnati. So I'm going to uh, lean in here. My favorite Week 8 prop on Monkey Knife Fight is the 281 passing yards for Derek Carr, and I'm going to take the more. I'm taking A.J. Green. His line is four and a half receptions, and I will take the more. He has seen double-digit targets the past two weeks. It looks like A.J. Green is finally getting acclimated they're finding the right way to use him after he had uh, his extended time off. Joe Burrow is throwing 42 times a game right now, and the Titans, the Titans are going to score on <laughs> against the Cincinnati Bengals. They will have to throw. Burrow will probably have to throw another 42 times. I expect AJ Green to receive more than four and a half receptions. It's a great one. I love that one. That is the layup of the week, if you will. Um, I I can't imagine him with. 
I can't either. Four or fewer uh, receptions. I'm Unless taking, he limps off the field. Well, sure. Always a possibility. <laughs> um, I'm taking Matthew Stafford versus Indy. His line right now is 275 and a half passing yards. I'm taking less than that. All right. You know, last week until Todd Gurley accidentally gave the Lions a whole nother drive, he wouldn't have gotten there. Prior to that, he had four games in a row where he's averaging 235 passing yards. They're using Matthew Stafford as they want to this year, which is as a game manager. Yeah, Indy is a very good defense. I don't love uh, his potential to uh, outscore or, or outthrow 275 and a half this week. Yeah, I, I, I especially with the matchup, I really agree with you on that. I do think uh, I do think things could evolve a little bit more positively for Stafford. He still had two games this season without Kenny Galladay, and that's uh, going to distort some numbers, but. I like it. India has just been a, a formidable D. You can check out Monkey Knife Fight this week. You can get involved with some of these prop bets. They're so fun. Ballerspicks.com. Use the code BALLERS. You get a 100% deposit match. Um, we have had Foot Clan players uh, playing with us all year long, and now's a great time to get involved. Yeah, man, this, this is the time of the year. Get involved. You've, you're, you're learning more about the NFL. You, you've got more information here. You can make some educated... Uh, Prop bets uh, over here, over on uh, ballerspicks.com. Ballerspicks.com. Use the code BALLERS. 100% deposit match up to 50 bucks. It is extremely fun if you have never done it. And this, it doesn't take uh, a whole lot of learning. Like, you're not. You call your shots yeah. on a couple of plays. You're like, I like this player. I'm going to go in on it. Absolutely. All right. Have a healthy and safe and Stay enjoyable weekend. Safe. And uh, we will. We'll see you on Monday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.